I was 12 years old, I successfully programmed a robot for the very first time. At 13, I learned through my Ethiopian pen pal that over one billion people across the world are living in energy poverty, with restricted access to lights, refrigeration for medical supplies, and even clean running water. I decided to do something about this problem, and at 15, I presented my solution to the President of the United States, Barack Obama. At 17, my father was given a 30% chance to live. At 18, I decided to do something about it. My name is Hannah Herbst. I'm thrilled to be here today, and this is my story. Ever since I was very young, my parents taught me to be compassionate. They also ingrained in me that it was important to value the gift of education. In elementary school, I worked hard to maintain high grades. However, my school wouldn't allow me to be in the advanced math class simply because I didn't score high enough on an aptitude test. Unfortunately, at this very early age, this denial led me to believe that I wasn't smart. My parents did everything they could to convince me otherwise, but I still believed that I didn't have it in me to excel in math or science. The arts, however, were central to my childhood, especially theater. In the summer, my brother and I would go to theater camp, where we would spend our days acting, singing, and dancing. I will never forget the day my dad said, Hannah, you're not going to theater camp tomorrow. You're going to engineering camp. As a 12-year-old, <laughs> I was confused, I was disappointed, but most of all, I was terrified. I had already come to believe that I wasn't smart enough to excel in math or science, and I didn't know anything about engineering. Despite my apprehension, I walked into engineering camp that first day, sporting the pink T-shirt, advertising the latest musical I had been in, and I looked around the room and realized very quickly that I was the only girl there. I looked up at my dad and said, are you really going to leave me here with all of these boys all day long? He said, just try this for one day. If you don't enjoy it, you don't have to come back tomorrow. I thought that was fair enough, and I decided to spend the next eight hours doing science in exchange for never doing engineering again. Our goal at the camp was to create a small robot that could knock the opposing robot off of a raised platform. We were separated into teams, and despite being the only girl, I found that I was very quickly accepted and encouraged by the boys in my group. We were excited to tackle this challenge, and in the end found that we learned a lot about programming and robotics. What I realized today is that these boys are the reason that I came back to camp the next day, despite being given the option to leave. They could have easily told me to sit back and watch as they programmed and built the robot, but instead, they chose to show me kindness and to include me, even showing me how to program and then letting me do it for myself. This is so important, including people, whether they're obviously feeling a little awkward as the only girl in the room, or whether they're just like you, can make all the difference. Our team ended up winning this competition at the end of the camp program. My eyes were open that week to science as something more than just information in a textbook to be memorized and spit out in school. Now science was a hands-on process that demanded creativity to solve problems. To say that this camp changed the course of my life would be an understatement. I've been building robots with boys ever since. I had a unique opportunity to enroll in an early college program at Florida Atlantic University, where science is treated like a sport. Teams of students can compete in local, state, and national competitions. Going back to school after that engineering camp, I joined just about every one of these science teams within the walls of my school. And I found myself staying up late, reading about how to make robots more efficient, how to lead a team well, and how we can best communicate our ideas to other people. Learning by doing had always helped me, and in order to learn as much as I could, I built several small robots, such as this one. So this is touch sensor, and when he hits that wall, he's going to stop. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is clearly very advanced, I know. <laughs> of course, I'm kidding, but everyone has a starting point. No matter how basic the robots and innovations may seem at first, it helps to start somewhere, even if it's at square one. My goals and pursuits were always tethered to compassion. 
My science teacher, Ms. Malou, encouraged my classmates and me to look around to find the problems in our lives that we could solve using the skills that we learned in school. So when a problem came in the mail, it was natural for me to want to find a solution. Since I was very young, my pen pal Ruth, who lives in Ethiopia on the east coast of Africa, and I had exchanged letters through a ministry called Compassion International. One day, I received this letter talking about how Ruth was living in energy poverty with little access to basic resources that I took for granted living in the United States. These problems impacting Ruth struck me, and I knew that I wanted to do something to help my friend. Living in Florida, a state surrounded by water on three sides, I've quite literally grown up with water all around me. One afternoon, I saw a massive boat get swept sideways by moving water, and I wondered if I could harness the power of this moving water and convert it into usable electricity. I thought that I may be able to help my friend this way. I began this project with very complicated designs. My first several prototypes, such as these two, broke over and over again. You can see me on the left testing one of these with a very limited range of arm motion because I had a huge life jacket on. It was frustrating to watch these prototypes break, but I didn't give up and continued trying until this idea became a reality. This is the finished device that I call Beacon, or bringing electricity access to countries through ocean energy that can illuminate lights with the power of, wa of water spinning a generator. This device is similar to other energy collection devices using water power, but what makes Beacon unique is that it's compact and portable and can power other small-scale devices by charging batteries. I want to one day open source this idea so that it can be built and used anywhere to help families like Ruth's. Creating Beacon taught me several lessons, the most significant of which is that often the best solutions are the simplest ones. My science teacher encouraged me to enter the Discovery Education and 3M Young Scientist Challenge, where I submitted a short video about Beacon and was selected as a top 10 national finalist. Throughout the summer, each of us had the opportunity to work with a scientist from the company 3M. Mr. Jeff M. Slander taught me the importance of asking questions, of taking risks, and of trial and error to the process of innovation. After a summer of mentorship, I got to compete in the final challenge at 3M headquarters. Besides being mentored, something else significant that I took away from this experience was being inspired by the other 10 finalists and the passion that they shared for their research. Being named America's top young scientist in 2015 was a start of some incredible opportunities to travel and share my research and encourage other young people to get involved with science. This made me realize that when it comes to science, it doesn't matter how old you are or how much you know when you begin. What matters is that when you see a problem, you approach it fearlessly and embrace failure as a learning opportunity rather than as a roadblock even when life doesn't quite go as planned. Just before Christmas in 2017, my dad was diagnosed with late-stage cancer. I will never forget watching the surgeon share this news with my mom in the hospital hallway. My dad has been my inspiration my whole life, but especially on this science journey. Much like my pen pal Ruth had inspired me all those years ago, at this point, science became more than just a subject to be studied in school. It became like a building block to help my dad. After a difficult surgery, my dad was left with something called a surgical site infection. I knew at this point I wasn't equipped to tackle cancer research. However, I thought I could take on the issues of infection that my dad and so many others were dealing with post-operatively. I learned that there are over 200 million occurrences of surgical site infections every year, and many of these result in adverse effects, including overprescription of antibiotics, which lead to resistant superbugs, which have no cure, over 5.9 million tons of medical waste, and over $3 trillion in healthcare expenses in the U.S. every single year. At this time, I was working in the Florida Atlantic Biomechanics Lab, or the Fab Lab. <laughs> the Fab Lab is a marine biomechanics lab run by Dr. Marion Porter, dedicated to researching different types of fish. I was studying the properties of shark skin prior to my dad's diagnosis. I learned that scientists believe that shark skin's micropattern, called the dermal denticle micropattern, blocks marine bacteria from sticking to the surface and building up, causing bacterial growth all over it. 
I wanted to bring shark skin's pattern, specifically the antibacterial properties, out of the water to apply it to a medical facility, where similar bacterial growth causes surgical site infections. Despite being so excited about discovering a potential solution to this problem, going to lab was difficult knowing that my dad was going to cancer treatment. This was definitely a low point in my life, and I stopped going to lab. I was completely discouraged, and I struggled to make sense of this new reality. As I was going through this difficult time, one of my mentors said to me, the worst thing you can do is see a problem you can solve and do nothing about it. These words set off a light bulb in my mind. Suddenly, I was so inspired, and I decided that I could take action. I proposed the idea to use shark skin's micro pattern as an antibacterial bandage to my mentor, Dr. Porter, and she encouraged me to get to work to bring this idea to fruition. With this renewed purpose, I felt excited to go to lab every day, this time with a purpose working to help my dad. This is an image of one of the six bandages that I developed compared to real shark skin. You can see that the dentical micro pattern is captured really well on the bandage that we created. I tested these bandages using a bacteria called Staph, which is an isolate in most surgical site infections. This bandage, which is both antibacterial and reusable, prevents over 90% of Staph species from entering nutrient-dense environments similar to real wounds without any added antibiotics or chemicals, significantly outperforming commercially used bandages. Science is always a trial and error process, and it took many months of prototyping and failing to achieve a successful result. I was honored to attend the International Science and Engineering Fair this year with thousands of other young scientists. I believe that the world should have renewed hope, knowing that there are thousands of kids all across the world working to solve some of society's greatest challenges. My sharkskin-inspired bandage was recognized as first place and best in my category at the International Science Fair this year. Celebrating this moment with my family, especially with my dad, is something that I will never forget. Throughout this journey, I've learned three major lessons that perhaps you may find helpful as well. The first is to ask questions. Questioning the world around you is the first step to becoming a good scientist. And having the bravery to ask these questions is what leads to cool innovations. The second lesson is to embrace failure. There have been many occasions where I pour lots of hours into a project or a prototype or a test method just for it to crumble before my eyes. A good example of this was testing the early beacon prototypes, where I was being pushed around by waves in the ocean and the whole device would break and sink to the bottom. <laughs> I would get disappointed, but each failed prototype ended up being a building block that led me to a breakthrough. I now know that failure is instrumental in success. One can't exist without the other. The third lesson I have learned is to lean on others both the mentors in front of you and the peers and family around you. These are some young women who I'm proud to call my friends, who are also in science. They're from around the world working to solve some of society's most pressing issues, including finding exoplanets and space junk, to preventing breast cancer radiation damage, to improving water quality, to getting more girls involved in science. Being part of a group of people greater than yourself, whether that be a robotics team or a sports club or a group of girls who also read research papers at 3 a.m. on school nights for fun, serves to grow you intellectually and inspires other people to engage in similar work. Attending science fairs and robotics competitions has allowed me to meet hundreds of people, especially students, who are passionate about learning new things and about applying science to real life. Meeting these peers began back when I was 12 years old. Kindness and encouragement of other people truly can make all the difference in their stories. I certainly wouldn't be here today without the people around me. In the end, I think back to the beginning of my journey, building overly complicated, dysfunctional current energy collection devices out of leftover parts from robotic season, all because of a problem that impacted my friend's ability to get an education and drink clean water. To all of you, and especially to the young girls, who have been told that you aren't smart enough for the advanced class, who truly believe that you can't build a robot simply because you haven't been encouraged to try, I challenge you to look around 
and seek solutions to the problems in your life because they can be found in the most unusual of places, like a moving body of water or the sharks that swim in it. Remember that you don't have to be the smartest person in the room to make a difference, and that it is okay to be different. Go ahead and build robots with the boys. Don't be afraid to be yourself, even if you are the only girl in the room. Thank you.